Beta blockers, also called beta-adrenergic blockers, are one of the most important drugs used in cardiovascular medicine. Let's start by breaking the term beta-adrenergic blockers. First of all, what does adrenergic mean? The meaning of adrenergic is liberating, activated by, or involving adrenaline or a substance like adrenaline, which are catecholamines, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. These substances are primarily released from the adrenal medulla and then sympathetic nerve endings. Now, these substances require receptors to attach to cells and start working, which are called adrenergic receptors. Adrenergic receptors, also called adrenal receptors, fall into one of two categories, alpha or beta receptors. Those two classes are further subdivided into alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, and beta-3. Beta receptors, or most accurately, beta-1 receptors, are present in three locations, the heart, the kidney, and the fat cells. The catecholamines, epinephrine, and norepinephrine bind to these beta-1 receptors and increase cardiac automaticity as well as conduction velocity, which leads to increased heart rate or tachycardia. They also serve one more function, beta-1 receptors also induce renin release, and this leads to an increase in blood pressure. Now, here comes the drug that blocks these receptors, also called beta blockers. The beta blocker does two things here, it reduced heart rate and blood pressure as well. As we know, catecholamines, norepinephrine, and epinephrine have both ionotropic and chronotopic effects on the heart, hence the heart rate increases when these are activated. So beta blockers block the adrenergic receptors and inhibit these effects, which results in a reduced heart rate. Also, the decreased heart rate leads to reduced cardiac output and hence blood pressure drops as a result. Beta blockers decrease renin secretion, which ultimately leads to reduced blood pressure. Also, the negative chronotropic and enotropic effects lead to a decreased oxygen demand, that is how angina improves after beta blocker usage. As we can see, beta blockers can be used to treat tachycardia, high blood pressure and angina as well. Beta blockers also help widen veins and arteries to improve blood flow. Your brain produces the chemical messengers noradrenaline and adrenaline when you are anxious. These increase your heart rate and cause you to shake or perspire. Beta blockers aid in reducing the impact of these chemical messengers. This lessens the symptoms of anxiousness in the body, so it can be used to treat anxiety. Beta blockers may prevent the arrhythmia from happening, but more frequently they are helpful for lowering the heart rate while the arrhythmia is present without truly ending it. Hence, it is a useful drug in controlling the rate of patients with long-term arrhythmias. By chance, they were discovered to also help with migraines. This occurred when patients who had been treated with beta blockers discovered that the medications also reduced the symptoms of their migraines. To learn more about how beta blockers help migraine, please watch the video in the corner above. So far, so good. Beta blockers were first introduced in the late 1960s and proved safe, inexpensive, and effective at treating heart conditions, but there are some issues with where to and where not to use these medications. Beta receptors are found all over the body and induce a broad range of physiologic effects. The blockade of these receptors with beta blocker medications can lead to many adverse effects. Beta blockers lower the secretion of melatonin and, hence, may cause insomnia and sleep changes in some patients. Bradycardia and hypotension are two adverse effects that may commonly occur. Common side effects of beta blockers can include cold hands or feet, fatigue, and weight gain. Less common side effects include depression, shortness of breath, and trouble sleeping. Now, there are two types of beta blockers, selective and non-selective. Selective beta blockers are cardioselective. In other words, they select the beta receptors located in the heart tissue, known as the beta-1 receptors. With the help of this kind of beta blocker, you may be able to lower your heart rate and systolic pressure, or the pressure your blood vessels experience when your heart beats. They are frequently used to assist those who are suffering from problems like high blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, and chest pain. Common selective beta blockers include atenolol, metaprolol, nabivolol, and bisoprolol. Non-selective beta blockers, on the other hand, block not just the beta-1, it also blocks beta-2 and beta-3 receptors, helping to address even more physical symptoms of performance anxiety. 
As a result, they also target the beta receptors in your blood arteries, GI system, and lungs in addition to those in your heart. Taking this type of medication may help you breathe more slowly, stop your hands from shaking, or stop your palms from perspiring. A few examples of popular non-selective beta blockers are propanolol, labetalol, natalol, and pindolol. In the past, beta blockers were not recommended for people with asthma. While non-selective beta blockers are not recommended for asthmatics, cardioselective beta blockers, also known as beta-1 selective, are. Beta blockers should not be used by patients who have either acute or chronic bradycardia, hypotension, or both. Depending on the patient's prior medical history, certain beta blockers are contraindicated. Sotolol usage is not advised for anyone with long QT syndrome or those who have previously had torsades to points. Beta blockers should be avoided by people who have Raynaud's syndrome due to the possibility of exacerbation. Beta blockers are available in oral, intravenous, or ophthalmic forms and are also injectable intramuscularly. Dosages are available in various ranges, depending on the specific medication. You shouldn't suddenly stop taking a beta blocker because doing so could increase your risk of a heart attack or other heart problem. There are also few cases of beta blocker toxicity we can encounter in clinical practice. The antidote for beta blocker overdose is glucagon. It is especially useful in beta blocker induced cardiotoxicity. The second line of treatment is cardiac pacing if glucagon fails. The patient's heart rate and blood pressure require monitoring while using beta blockers. The healthcare team needs to prescribe, manage, and monitor the use of beta blockers safely and effectively. In the next video, we will discuss another antihypertensive medication, calcium channel blockers, in detail. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.